Hi everyone, Kate back for my favorite mysteries of the year and I'm so excited to talk about all of the mysteries uh, that I read. I had such a fabulous mystery reading year. Even despite not really reading much in the summer, I still had a ton of mysteries that I ended up loving and I have here Nineteen mysteries, and I can't. I should have had. Um, I should have taken a note of how many mysteries I read over the year. But I think I read close to fifty, which is around what I read last year. Um, so I did do different categories this year too, just to kind of uh, have, keep things all in order. So the first and a category I can't believe I have a whole category for is Golden Age. I have officially fallen in love with Golden Age mysteries. I uh, before was kind of put off by the lack of character development in many Agatha Christie books. But what I have decided is that when I want something that's kind of as easy to read as a cozy, but I want the writing to be very clever and literary, um, not necessarily liter liter literary, can't talk, but very clever and just pristine, uh, Gold Age Mysteries are a great place to go. So if I just want the puzzle and really awesome writing with it, then I think this is just a great thing to do. Um, okay, so first on the list for Golden Age is by Josephine Tay, and that is Brat Farrar. Uh, this is a really iconic mystery because then in the course of this year, I ended up reading two kind of retellings of Brett Farrar. Uh, but the basic premise is there is a family and uh, a couple years ago when uh, there were several children in the family, the parents died and then one, uh, there were twin brothers, uh, some of their children, and the one twin brother just disappeared. Uh, and so then years later, uh, a guy who happens to look a lot like said twin brother is somewhere and this man will not stop staring at him and he's just really like weirding him out. And finally he says like, you look a lot like this guy. You look so much like him. Um, I think we could teach you all about this family and you could go and you could pose to be this guy and you could get the inheritance because you are the older one. You're supposed to get the inheritance and you could just split the money with me. And uh, so that is what happens. And um, it's such a quiet mystery. Uh, I said it felt like a Alfred Hitchcock movie, but it was just so... Um, different from anything I had read. And Josephine Tay, her writing is just phenomenal. I really do. Um, oh, I just love it. So I highly, highly recommend Brett Farrar. Uh, and then two Agatha Christie that I really enjoyed. Uh, the first is The Murder of Roger Ackroyd. This was just astounding. And I actually knew the twist going into this one. But it was almost more fun to know the twist because I was really looking and analyzing the whole time. Like, oh, did he say that? But did he mean this? And it, it was just really, it was just so interesting. And it's also fun to see uh, Poirot in this story. You know, it's a, it's a village mystery. And Poirot is, uh, he's decided he's going to live in the country and you know, have a garden, but he's kind of bored. And then this murder happens. So he's a little part of him is glad because he has something to investigate and, you know, spend his time on besides, uh, running a garden. And so that was really fun to see. And I just, now I've come to, uh, really enjoy the character of Poirot before he used to really annoy me, but now kind of his character flaws, I'm just kind of used to them from watching the whole BBC series. Uh, so I'm just like, yeah, it's whatever. Um, and then Halloween Party is a really fun one. I do, and I do recommend reading it, starting it on Halloween and then, you know, finishing it a few days after. Uh, it was about uh, Ariadne Oliver, who is a friend of Poirot's and one of my favorite characters. And she is at this Halloween party and there is one of the children at the Halloween party is found drowned in the apple bobbing tub. So it's very sinister looking. Um, 
and Ariane the Oliver. She's a famous mystery writer, and a lot of people don't know how to say her detective's name, so you can tell it's kind of basically Agatha Christie putting herself in the story, which I think is so fun, living vicariously in her story. And um, Ariane the Oliver calls Poirot in and says, please investigate this case. This is really like you need to figure out who did this. And so he comes and investigates. And I just really do like um, this style of mystery where they're kind of uh, just going around visiting different people, getting different information from different people. And yeah, just really enjoyed it. Um, and then lastly, one I read in December was An English Murder by Cyril Hare. This is one that I found because I wanted to read like a Christmassy cozy and this takes place, uh, it's a, you know, English manor in the countryside and um, this really, you know, the crotchety uh, uh, patriarch of the family is found dead in his room. And so there ends up being an inspector who's there and investigates the case for himself. But this was just around 200 pages and I really liked that because it just kind of had the the necessary details and didn't feel bogged down it didn't feel slow and it was just it was really fun to guess um yeah just a really fun puzzle mystery uh then three victorian mysteries that are on here so definitely not your typical mystery but i i really enjoyed them so much i wanted to include them two uh were wilkie collins so i started the moonstone uh last october and just wasn't feeling it and then when I wanted to kind of weed out some of my currently reading, I did, you know, my own little personal readathon and I finished it in March and ended up really coming to enjoy it. It's kind of one of the original detective stories. It's about this uh, iconic jewel, the moonstone that goes missing and um, they're trying to figure out who took it. And it, it goes over the course of a long time and has several different narrators, which I think is really nice um, for the pacing of the story and just keeps you still interested because you're having these different styles of storytelling. And I, I came to really enjoy it. And I also really enjoyed the female protagonist in this was a very uh, like fully dimensional character. I didn't find her like every other Victorian female and I really liked that. Uh, then the next one is uh, The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. And this one, uh, where I felt like, you know, I love, I, I really did enjoy the Moonstone. The Woman in White felt like such a masterpiece uh, and made me decide, you know, I will be reading all of Wilkie Collins books. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, amazing. It starts out where this um, young man realizes that basically my family's super poor and I need to do something about that. So he decides to teach art and he comes, so he comes to teach art to these two sisters and the plot just takes off from there. There's lots of like secrets and lies and, um, you know, forbidden love. And, um, while he's on the way to this house, there is just this random woman in white who appears and she, uh, says, you know, uh, please like uh, don't tell anyone you've seen me. And then he finds out shortly after that, that she escaped out of an insane asylum and just very typical Victorian sensation novel. And I highly recommend it. And then moving on to the third uh, Victorian one and was definitely a sensation novel and was, oh, I was just gobbling it up. And that was Lady Audley's Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braddon. Another Victorian author that I added to my list of ones that I want to read in full. And this was just such a, oh, it was such a delicious read. Uh, you know, it starts out where uh, Lady Audley is the second wife of this man and his cousin comes to visit and he does not know much about Lady Audley. So you're finding out, and hence the title, Lady Audley's Secret. What is Lady Audley's Secret? The, you know, inquiring minds want to know. So um, what I loved about this is it has... I just love the Victorian writing style where I felt like it had some just really beautiful kind of reflective passages on nature, but it was also so dramatic and it would end chapters on a cliffhanger. And uh, there were only a couple chapters where I wasn't totally hooked. The rest of the book, I just could not put it down. It was really fun. I did it as a buddy read with um, Bree Hill and Kate from the Novel Nomad and just absolutely adored it. I will say for fans of Daphne du Maurier, this to me, the tension building and just how I felt 
um, while reading this really felt reminiscent of reading a Daphne du Maurier. Historical mysteries. I, I'm just making kind of some of these categories are kind of my own, but these are, are mysteries that are kind of like period drama mysteries where it's, you know, written in a, a different era. Um, so two Mary Stewart's on there. And the first is Madam, Will You Talk? And this I read also in March when I was cleaning out my currently reading. And this to me felt just as exciting and pacey as um, Nine Coaches Waiting, which was the first uh, Mary Stewart I ever read. Uh, and this is, takes place in Provence. And there's sort of this sinister character. He's the father of this this little boy that our protagonist meets. And um, she hears all of these like really like crazy stuff about him. And um, she decides she's going to protect this little boy from him. So it's just kind of this figuring out who this guy is and her being on the run. And it's just so, um, you know, car chases in the, the French countryside and just in only a way Mary Stewart can do it. Uh, and it's still my second favorite Mary Stewart, even after reading several more. But another one that was on my favorites for the year is The Ivy Tree. And this was Mary Stewart's homage to Brett Farrar. So, and it's really fun too, because it's one of those books that knows, like while you're reading it, um, you kind of know you're reading a book uh, because Brett Farrar is referenced like four or five times. And um, so to be honest, I was slightly bored uh, no, I was pretty bored when I first started reading this because I'm like, well, this is just Brett Farrar. I, I know this plot. Like, I don't want to just read, you know, a re, uh, you know, a, just a rehash of the plot. But then about halfway through, Mary Stewart totally turns it into her own thing. Um, something I, you know, things I wasn't expecting. And I ended up liking it actually slightly more than Brett Farrar. So I highly, highly recommend uh, first reading Brett Farrar and then The Ivy Tree. Um I think that's the order that the different twists that are in each one, you'll enjoy them the most that way. So that was definitely on the list. Um, then the next, uh, the next one is from the Maisie Dobbs series, which is now like a very loved detective series of mine. And that is Among the Mad. This is number six. And in this one, there is uh, someone who is threatening a big act of terrorism and that if the police don't, you know, cooperate, meet his demands, this big act of terrorism is going to happen. And so it's up to Maisie to investigate and figure out exactly who this person is, where their motivations are coming from, um, what's their history, why are they so um, bent on just wreaking havoc. And uh, so as always with Maisie Dobbs, what I love is it's like 50% mystery and then 50% her own personal drama. So there's some romantic drama in this. Um, and I just, I really enjoy this series. I find uh, Jacqueline Winspear's uh, love of history so apparent when you read this series. And she just, I think she just relishes doing the research for each book. So I'm really sad I'm getting close to being caught up in this one. Uh, but I just, I can't help myself. I want to keep reading them. I really do enjoy this. And I have basically read, I think all of them as audiobook because I love the, the narrator so much. So yes, I am adoring this. The next four were all series that were new to me. And um, I ended up loving. Now, prior to 2017, I actually had not been able to find a Victorian mystery series that I liked. I had read two different ones and did not enjoy either of them. They were both like too sinister or just like felt trashy. I, I don't know. I just, I didn't enjoy them. Um, but I ended up finding three that I loved. Uh, and so the first is And Only to Deceive by Tasha Alexander. This is the Lady Emily series. And Tasha Alexander has done a very clever thing that she set this in the Victorian era, but she's made our protagonist a widow. So she can kind of have the freedom that a married lady would have, but not almost more freedom because she doesn't have this um, kind of the stereotypical like repressive Victorian husband telling her, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that. Uh, so just like a genius device she's done there, setting it, you know, making her a widow. Um, and this was one that I read with Kate from the novel Nomad, and we just both 
fell head over heels in love and then went the whole year not reading another one and then we just now this January picked up the next one the poisoned season and oh, I enjoyed it just as much as the first one I was telling Kate what I love about this series is that it feels half um <laughs> half soap opera half mystery and I love it so much I just I relish the drama um so yeah lots of Lady Emily and kind of these different men in her life who are interested in her she has to figure out who's good who's bad um what's really neat is she has this whole um just love for history and scholarship and I love that about her character it makes her stick out and she just loves to study languages and history and artifacts and yeah I just love it and that I need 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 to read the second one because the third one is out now and that is A Curious Beginning by Deanna Rayborn this was the first in the Veronica Speedwell mystery series and this is about uh, a single lady in the Victorian era, but she's very unconventional. So she just doesn't really care what society thinks. Uh, she is a lepidopterist. She loves to study butterflies. And um, it's really neat to see that. I like, I like it when they're, when the, you know, the sleuth has some kind of quirk or interest that is built upon in the series. Uh, so this one was really, um, in, it just it moved so quickly so it was really fun to read and like they end up at the circus at one point and at the very beginning of the book Veronica on her own and she really has to figure out she knows her life is in danger and she has to figure out like who is endangering her life um and she ends up kind of uh traveling around with this guy named Stoker who they have kind of some chemistry but he's also super rough around the edges so that's a really fun dynamic and I know he's in the next one which is A Perilous Undertaking which I need 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 to read um because like I said the third one just came out then another one that I read with Kate that was a lovely surprise I had actually not been particularly interested in this series but Kate asked if we could read it and that was Girl Waits with Gun by Amy Stewart this is um based on true events which is really cool and it's about one of the first uh female uh cops and it's in it's not far from um from Philadelphia where I am it's uh right outside of New York City and um it's just so much fun because there's also I'm a sucker for any like female friendship in books and uh so she has two sisters and it's she and her sisters kind of investigating different crimes around town and there's just like lots of um corruption and they have to kind of take that head on and it was just such a delight told in such a winsome way and like i said the friendships with the sisters was just so nice uh really really enjoyed that and then yet another victorian series that i found to love and that is the um charles lennox series and he is a gentleman in the victorian era and this series is written by charles finch and the first was a beautiful blue death and i read this with kate from the novel nomad and we re then we read the september society and we're planning on reading um more in the series this upcoming year uh but it's really neat too because he also has um this really special friendship uh, uh, fam you know, with this woman who's been a family friend for a long time and it's neat to see that kind of develop and blossom. And yeah, I, I just really enjoyed this. It was written very cleverly, a very cozy, um, mystery. Uh, there's, you know, lots of talk about tea and reading by the fire and crumpets and it's just lovely for, um, you know, those homebody mystery lovers of us. Uh, and then we move on to, um, I just realized I forgot one for the golden age and that is Strong Poison by Dorothy Sayers. I think that actually might be the favorite mystery that I read all year. I had only ever read Whose Body by Dorothy Sayers and did not enjoy it kind of in the least. I was like, this is everything that I really don't like about golden age mysteries. The lack of character development blah 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 so uh this though felt so different it's a lot later in the series and it's begin it's the beginning of the lord peter whimsy and harriet Vane books um so whereas i said you know agatha christie puts ariadne oliver in her books um uh dorothy sayers puts uh 
I just went totally blank. Dorothy Sayers puts Harriet Vane in her books. And you can tell Dorothy Sayers, though, was kind of enamored with Lord Peter Whimsey because there's romance uh, with Harriet Vane and Lord Peter. Uh, and it starts out basically she is um, on trial for murder. And so Lord Peter decides to defend her. And uh, it's just oh, so fun. Just the like verbal sparring that they have. Um, Dorothy Sayers, incredibly, incredibly clever and also poignant in her writing. They're just literary masterpieces that happen to be mysteries. I, I just, I love them so much. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to, you know, continuing on in the series, which I can't believe I didn't do that, you know, make time for more of them in 2017. So I am actually starting Five Red Herrings uh, with Kate from the novel Nomad uh, very soon. And, but what I'm looking forward to the most apparently is gaudy night which is where kind of everything culminates and it's just supposed to be just a great great mystery okay so now in the cozy category two from there uh i have to include an agatha raisin you know because i read i think maybe six and i think my favorite was agatha raisin and the wizard of evesham um there is uh this hairdresser who um is kind of a womanizer and you know he's found murdered and so Agatha had actually been to this hair salon um, prior to his murder and so um, you know she takes it upon herself to investigate this case and it's just these books kind of always do what I want them to and I always listen to the audiobook because they're very short and I can kind of um, just listen to little snippets over the course of, you know, a couple weeks and finish a book. Or I can just listen to a bunch, you know, and finish it in a matter of days. I just really love this series and I've come to just love how sardonic of a character Agatha is. So yeah, I'm, I'm really loving it. I think now I'm in book 10, I think I am, but I'm definitely going to read all of this series really enjoy it from the um amelia peabody series by elizabeth peters this is about amelia peabody who is an egyptologist and is married to her husband emerson who is also an egyptologist and they have a son and most of the books take place in egypt uh this one though was a nice departure it's uh the deeds of the disturber and um amelia and emerson come back to london to stay for a while and you get to see um Emerson's brother and his uh, sister-in-law Evelyn who you had you know known in some of the other books and uh, so this was nice because a, a couple sometimes I feel like this series can feel a little routine and so this was a nice uh, departure from that just kind of shaking things up and it makes me excited to read more in the series and lastly I have the category of literary so these are more modern ones that but that definitely feel kind of a step above in the writing and the first is Sydney Chambers and the Shadow of Death by James Runcie this was one that I was only like so so interested in reading uh, because the TV series just different things that happened in the plot has made me not as excited about it but I'm so glad I gave this a chance because it was the writing was just spectacular and this is one that I was surprised I enjoyed because it's kind of five different little novellas all put together into one volume but there is also an overarching personal plot for Sydney who is the main character and so I really enjoyed that and in case you don't know this series is about um Sydney Chambers who is a vicar in this really small town of Grantchester and then he ends up kind of collaborating working with the police and helping them solve crimes I need to see his friends friendship with Jordy who's kind of the main like detective that he works with so really really recommend those and lastly oh my goodness I I'm so bummed we uh, Kate and I only read two Lindley um, in 2017, but really enjoyed the ones that we read. And the one that I have as a favorite is A Suitable Vengeance by Elizabeth George. Um, so yeah, this series is just incredibly literary. I honestly feel like it takes the same amount of concentration as uh, as do classics. I It's really, it's a lot. So um, there's so much in this. Uh, it's such a like examination of humanity but you also get to see this you know the different developments in the lives of inspector Lindley and then his partner um 
Barbara Havers, and they're both really fascinating characters to me. Just all of the characters feel very, they feel fully fleshed out. They don't feel one dimensional and they stand out from one another. The side characters um, just to me are interesting. So there's lots of like personal drama. So Deborah and Helen, and I just find all of them interesting. So I highly recommend this if you want real like gritty, hard hitting, um, but literary series and really compelling characters. So I'm out of breath now. That uh, was, you know, all of the mysteries that I think deserve to be in the top mysteries that I read of the year. Uh, but yeah, just wanted to tell you all about them. I hope you enjoyed hearing about that and I will see you guys for another video soon. Bye.